And for the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everyone. This is Monday, October 17th. If you have any questions, business with this body, come up to the microphone over here and uh, give us your name and address and state your, state your business. Call the roll, please. Cedar? Here. Ellery? Here. Foley? Here. Kinsbotter? Here. Kuffa? Here. Laporte? Here. McCartney? Here. All present, Your Honor. Thank you. One change to the agenda, number five presentation. We're going to strike that. Uh, Mr. Mayor was ill this evening. Consent agenda is number four, City Council Minutes of October 3rd, 2016, regular meeting recommendation approved. So moved. Support. Support. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We'll go to reports of administration. Mr. Booth? Yes, road work um, on Hawthorne and the skate park uh, is done. It's mm -hmm. my understanding. Uh, I have not seen Hawthorne, but I was a skate park. Uh, Orchard should be done as well this evening and then uh, tomorrow is South 9th um, so that project is coming to a close here soon um, water main work that's being uh, done on uh, Waterloo between 9th and 10th is uh, should be completed by the end of this week except for some of the restoration work <coughs> and that's all I have this evening your honor any questions from Mr. Booth I do have one question your honor um, is there been any update on the Sinclair Highway um, study and report from AEW, Steve Pangori, he had uh, said that they were very, they were close, but I'll have to follow up on that because that's been a couple weeks. So I would, I I would have expected something by now. <coughs> Has the movement stopped? Did they say anything about the measurements? They haven't said anything about okay. it. Anything else? Can I just ask about the, the, the Bob Lowe boat? I mean, did, did this individual give us any sort of material to look at, like what he's proposing? Is it is it just going to be I'm going to show up one night and you guys go ahead and listen, or does he send like a detailed outline of what he's coming to talk about? Yeah, and I, I don't know who I'm asking the question to. I've so. been in contact with him. Okay, um, I I don't have a clue what he's going to present. All right. Yeah, I know uh, he wants to do a slideshow um, style presentation. I talked to him this morning. Uh, he felt ill and uh, couldn't make it. He's having a Bit of an issue finding a place to store the boat right now so they can work on it. Right. And that's been kind of consuming this time right now. Now we're going to give him a time on it? Um, I told him I'd contact him this week uh, about what you scheduled. Huh. Well, I didn't hear Mr. Laporte's question. Right, we're going to limit his speaking time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for Mr. Booth? <laughs> City Attorney is not with us tonight. Departments, Annette? Yes, I wanted to remind everybody in 22 days is the general election on Tuesday, November 8th. Absent voter ballot applications are available upon request in person at City Hall by mail by calling the clerk at 329-7121 or by <clears throat> printable download online at michigan.gov slash vote. And those applications will be accepted up to 2 p.m. on Saturday, November 5th. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to D, authorities, boards, and commissions. Cool number seven, unfinished business. We have a new business. Waste management proposal for extension of residential solid waste collection disposal recycling com composting agreement. Do you want to uh, kick this off and then? Well, I think we can introduce some uh, Pat Greavy and Mike. I can't recall your last name, Mike, but. Griffin, they're here this evening to um, talk to you about the proposal that they've given us uh, to extend the current uh, rubbish collection contract that we have. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of City Council. As uh, mentioned, my name is Pat Gravy. Um, I'm the public sector manager for uh, waste management. And Mike Griffin with, is with me. He's the operations manager. Um, I won't try to kid you. He's the guy that's in charge of doing the real work, not me. And so um, he manages our crews in your community and throughout the area. And um, <clears throat> we brought forth a proposal 
as the contract which we've had since 2009 is scheduled to end at uh, the end of November and uh, we wanted to put before you an opportunity to hopefully extend that contract uh, per the terms of the agreement for another five years um, over the years you know since we've had this contract we we always work hard to not only do <clears throat> everything right and on time and when we don't get it right to fix it as quickly as we can but our business is about efficiency and we keep working towards better efficiency better service to the customers and as you know recently we worked with your city and you were kind enough to let us move the entire contract to one day of the week instead of two um, suffice it to say over time um, this contract has become very efficient for us we understand the community um, the nature of the work here the volumes we're going to get and the variations as they occur throughout the year and so <coughs> with the increased efficiency with the time we've had it um, understanding those things fuel stabilized since back in the days when we started this contract we're able to offer you what I think is a pretty good savings of in good round numbers $15 per unit per year from where we are right now and in your packet is a schedule that basically shows that you know if you choose to go forward with this which we hope you will <clears throat> we're going to take the rate back to what it was um, in 2013 and follow that same price schedule going forward for the next three years the last two of the years of the contract have a four percent increase in them um, we need to build that in there because our costs will go up over time despite the efficiency um, but as you can see and hopefully you agree you'll have a nice savings um, if this is plausible to you as the uh, council and those um, who will make this decision um, we've also um, offered to we've got a couple of these containers they're called uh, solar solar powered compactors what they are is basically a garbage container that um, compacts itself it's powered by the Sun so it has a battery pack in it that runs the mechanism it's got about a one to five ratio compared to a normal litter basket and we have a couple of these available um, that we would be willing to offer to the community if you wanted to try them out in one of your parks or something like that or if you've got a spot where they might work um, we'd be happy to make them available as part of this um, so that you could uh, have them and if you like them keep them we've got two so I don't know where the right spots might be to put them but maybe your DPW could tell you and again we'd be happy to bring those down and and let you utilize them and see if you like them so with that um, I will stop and see if you have any questions for myself or Mike and um, as it relates to this matter or anything else involving your solid waste services is this an extension of our um, <coughs> the years that we've um, extended contracts is it, we always do a five-year so we had it the last extension was a five-year extension before that I think we had it for it started in 2009 but from the time we bid it to the time we started there was about a year that passed while the old contract finished out so I don't think the first term the original term was something less than five years but the last extension was a was a five-year so you got four percent year four and another four percent in year five that's correct for an eight percent total correct I'd move to approve your honor I'll support all right the motion is made in support to approve the contract ex extension with waste management is there any questions what if what if you find that the, that the trend in the business pat like for year four and year five I mean you know let's just say gas prices continue to go down I mean are we I mean this is a solid five-year contract with that four percent four percent there's no calling you after three years and say hey Pat you know man I got I got Marcotte beating on my door man and you know they're they're telling me that they'll they'll, they'll beat your rate and you know mm -hmm. uh, can I cancel the contract um, there there's not a provision in it to cancel other than of course non-performance you always have that uh, that opportunity but you know having been your partner for this long um, if it came to that point and we needed to have those discussions certainly we'd sit down with the city look at the facts as they are and and see what kind of you know opportunity it is to work something out I, I mean yeah, I assume the increases are for increases in labor and health insurance and labor and health and the normal health. everyday business correct um, tires and right trucks and all those things that come with it how is picking up the trash once a week um, 
Uh, I mean, is it beneficial for you guys? I mean, is, is it just a matter of adding another truck and more manpower? <clears throat> or Yeah, it was basically. It was basically just instead of what we were doing prior to was one truck on Wednesday, one truck on Thursday. Now it's just two trucks on Thursday. And, and what it did is it helped us uh, move some of our other work around, you know, because the goal is to keep all of our trucks, all of our crews busy five days a week. And so that's what we were trying to establish. That's why we needed to change the service level. Yeah. I mean, I can speak for my neighborhood. I, I think you guys do a pretty decent job. I don't see too many things blowing around in the, in the roads. And, uh, you know, that's always somewhat encouraging when you, you know, when you don't come home till after 5 o'clock and your stuff's still in front of your house. So. Thank you, I appreciate that, and I'll make sure that all of the crews know that, too. Yeah. So, Any other questions? Everything other than the rates and the contract are the same. It's all been reviewed by uh, council, legal council. Jim Downey did look at it, yes. Okay. Was, I mean, has anything okay else changed in the contract other than the rates? The only thing I'd like to point out, too, uh, Pat referenced a, the current rate at 1376. The uh, rate that residents are being charged is 1324. Um, what the city did is we had some excess money in the fund. Instead of the, the uh, increase that was passed through by the county <coughs> for the landfill, it was 50 cents. Uh, we did not pass that through to the residents. And then there's also a two cents um, state tax. So if you're comparing the 1376 to your bill, you'll see that uh, you're currently being charged uh, 3972 um, and not the higher rate. So I'll make sure everybody notice that because sometimes that'll go, they'll go, heck, I'm, I'm paying less, which most people are excited about, and they probably won't call you and ask you to raise it, but uh, just want to make sure everyone did know that that uh, 1376 is actually 52 cents higher than what you're currently paying. So am I hearing it right that we're okay to ask for a review after three years? I think what Pat said is if you ever have a problem, just call him. Not to paraphrase for you, but. <laughs> That's right. No. Any problem, anything. All right, any other questions? Comes with the territory. Right. <clears throat> right. Call the roll, please. Ellery? Yes. Foley? Yes. Kinspotter? Yes. Kuffa? Yes. Report? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Cedar? Yes. Carrie Drana? All right, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. We appreciate your business and the chance to continue as your partner. So. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Bet. Row number nine, claims and accounts, October 7th and 13th for 2016. Hearing no questions, Your Honor, I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Support. Motion made supporting questions. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Let's go to number 10, public comment, public questions. Anybody have anything for the good of the group here? You want to come over the microphone over here? We didn't get one back over here after our initial meeting. Uh, Gary Coe's 1012 Riverside Avenue. Um, just a comment on the subject I was here last time for, and that was the speeds on Riverside Avenue. Now this speed check indicates that no improvement has been made on the average speed on Riverside. It'll be the last time I come here to discuss that with you. I will tell you there's precedent for a class action lawsuit to enforce the speed limit, and until such time, we can request a reduction in our taxes because of the safety hazard. Now let me explain the safety hazard to you. Last Saturday, I backed out of my driveway at a quarter to eight in the morning. As I turned around to exit my driveway onto Riverside Avenue, frontwards, a red truck came by me at least 65 to 70 miles an hour. It hit a deer in front of my house threw the deer 76 feet right to the edge of my car. The deer was still alive. I dialed 911. As I dialed 911, Homeland Security officer was driving by, and he stopped. We called 911, and the two of us stood there for 32 minutes. And the deer, we couldn't shoot it. I couldn't shoot it. It was in the city, within the city limits. Homeland Security officer had no authorization to shoot it, and that deer was in severe pain. Two broken legs, obviously hindquarters destroyed, a hoof laying in my front yard. It crawled 
across Riverside Avenue with his two front legs pulling it to get to the forest from or the, the woods where it came. I stood there in total disgust watching that animal suffer. Police officer shows up 32 minutes later and it's all documented. He said, I just got the call. I was one minute away. I said, really? Well, how come it took 32 minutes? He said, because the 911 call went to Canada. They routed it to downtown Detroit. Downtown Detroit routed it to St. Clair County and St. Clair County routed it to the city of St. Clair. Outrageous, absolutely outrageous. For 32 minutes and the officer is one minute away. Now, the point is this. The Homeland Security officer said, does traffic always go this fast on this road? I said all the time. And mind you, there were construction barrels the entire length of the east side of Riverside Avenue when this happened. And this guy's doing 60 to 70 miles an hour. I know you can't police everyone, but the average speeds haven't come down, so nothing's happened. There's also a video that's been done of the police car sitting in the Moore driveway running radar while cars go by him at 60 miles an hour. 60 miles an hour, it's, not, it's documented. So the point is, enough is enough. Either you do something about the speeds on Riverside Avenue or we just move forward. I don't wanna do that, but I'm paying over $14,000 a year in taxes on that, on that stretch and until I find a house in some other community, I'm gonna get my tax money's worth. But I would like an explanation from this council as to why a 911 call would go to Canada and why there aren't provisions for dealing with that issue. I don't understand that. But if that had been a child or a bicyclist laying in my front yard 76 feet from, from the uh, Riverside Avenue, they'd be dead. They'd be dead. That's wrong. That's wrong in any community, not just St. Clair, that's wrong. So I need an explanation for the safety factor in this city. Something's not right. And the only other thing I can say to you tonight is, I don't know who this lady is, but I know she sent you a letter because she copied me. I don't know who she is. But I'm going to suggest to you right now that every citizen in this, in this city, as well as the media, should get a copy of that letter and read it. Because to the best of my knowledge, it's factual. In fact, it's very factual. And consequently, that's all I'll say. Let everyone judge for themselves. But it regards the ownership of the St. Clair Inn. So with that, that's all I have to say tonight. Uh, I would like an explanation on the 911 issue because I think that's not only important to me, that's important to anyone that lives in this town. It's wrong. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Coles. You know, I, I heard that story earlier today about the the, the call going to Canada, and I, th I, I think that does need to be addressed. I don't understand. There's nothing you can do about it. It's the routing of the towers, and you're not going to be able to do anything. It's your carrier. Is it only on Riverside Avenue where that happens? It's mostly everything that side of the railroad tracks. Can I say something? That's absolutely, you're right, you're 100% right. And when you say you can't do anything about it, that's the most outrageous statement I've ever heard because someone can get with Canada Dispatch and say if it's coming from St. Clair, Michigan because it's an over, over the river call, then direct it directly to St. Clair Police instead of through Detroit and through St. Clair Dispatch. That can be resolved. But to leave half of the city and that's in situation for 911 calls outrageous. Yeah, that's that's what we have to get, get to the yeah. bottom of. Just well, exactly if that can be. Everything is routed through the county, county, anyways. Yeah, that's that's protocol. All of our 911 calls. Right. So a, land, a landline would have went right to the county, I would assume. Yes. A 911 landline call would have went right to the county. The cell, the cell is. Gary, I'm not arguing with you. I'm I, no, I'm a, I'm I'm asking a question just for the. Sake of the homeowners. That are, so a landline 911 call will go directly to dispatch. Yes. And, and it will get dispatched through normal 
po new normal procedures, I would, I'm speculating, but I would assume that that's the case. So the cell, because every time I drive up North Riverside, my cell gets bounced to Rogers, Canada. Mm -hmm. Every time I drive up M29. That's a cell carrier issue that we should probably look at trying to address as well with, with whoever the carrier is. But I would agree that we should probably find out through our county connections that right. there's something that we can tell the their counterparts across the river that we need to have those calls routed to St. Croix Code Dispatch. And not the D Detroit right, Dispatch right. or wherever it might have been going because that, I agree with Mr. Coase, that that would have been a bicyclist or a young child, that would have been a terrible 32 minutes. I actually have a meeting with Jeff Bone tomorrow about something else and I'll, we'll dig into this thing. All right, anybody else? Okay, we'll go to number 11. Anybody on council have anything? All right, then I'm going to go to number 12. I'm going to ask for a motion going to close session to discuss strategy connected with the negotiation of collective bargaining agreement. The employees represented by the Police Officers Label Council, POLC. I'll make that motion, Your Honor. I'll support. Right, motion made support. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Foley? Yes. Ginsbotter? Yes. Kappa? Yes. Report? Yes. McCartney? Yes. Mallory? Yep. Cedar? Yes. Carried, Your Honor. All right. We're going to go into closed session. You're more than welcome to stay. There's a possibility we'll take action upon our return. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Careful going home. Okay, see, watch the streets.